Thanks for joining us today on Around the Peninsula. I'm Maria Soreo. We are here today in Redondo Beach with Assembly Member Al Marasucci, who will host a seminar on senior scams and how you can learn how to best protect yourself. Good morning, everyone. I'm Al Marasucci. I'm your state assembly member, your state representative. Welcome to beautiful uh, Silverado Beach Cities, to the Beach Cities Health District main campus building. I uh, want to thank uh, Silverado and Lori Glover for uh, hosting us today. We're having this Senior Scam Stopper Seminar. And, uh, you know, I imagine, like my parents, that you might have a reason why you are here. You know, we've seen way too many senior scams, especially during this pandemic. You know, it's really a sad statement of our society that, uh, you know, especially in distressed times, that uh, there, there are so many scam artists that are seeking to, to target, especially our, our seniors. Uh, I know my my mom and dad, my uh, 91 years old and 89 years old, thank God they're alive and healthy. And they've always been very careful, you know, with all the, the phone calls that they get, you know, asking for their personal information, you know, and tr trying to get them to sign up for this thing or that. But the, the one thing that set off my mother, you know, she's normally a, uh, you know, a polite, nice little Japanese lady, but uh, she got a, a, a call, you know, saying, uh, Grandma, Grandma, this is, you know, you know, Bill. I, I you know, I'm lost and I, and I need some money. And of course, you know, my mom knows that she only has one granddaughter. <laughs> and so that scam is not going to work. And so, you know, normally, again, very polite, very nice, but uh, she let, you know, these folks have it before she slammed the phone down. But uh, I, I, I know that that is just, uh, you know, one too many examples of, of what many people are seeing. Um, you know, we, we've had several of these senior scam stopper uh, seminars before, and I know the number one question that we always get is why can't we do more to crack down on these bad actors? You know, th this has been an, an ongoing challenge. You know, part of the big problem is that, especially a lot of these phone scams, they're regulated by the federal government. They're operated by these fly-by-night operations where, you know, once you trace their phone calls and try to track them down to, to get at them. They just close shop and then they move their operation elsewhere. And so a big part of it is just that there, there just aren't enough, you know, good guys to go after all the bad guys that are operating these fly-by-night operations. But be that as it may, we are here today to try to uh, uh, share with you some practical information, some practical advice on how we can all do our best to protect ourselves uh, from, from these scam artists. Thank you all for being here, and we are going to have our, our first speaker, the supervisor from the Contractor State License Board. How do unlicensed contractors target seniors? Seniors are most of the time trustworthy, and they're most vulnerable, right? So what we're trying to do is go out there and try to catch these um, scammers. Um, Unlicensed contractors will try to manipulate seniors and establish connections with them and to take advantage of them. The biggest scams um, for unlicensed contractors is that they will ask for a large down payment on these contracts. Based on California law, the down payment must not be more than 10% or $1,000, whichever is less um, on these contracts. The most common scams that they do, besides doing the phone calls, they'll go out to your door and knock on doors and try to pressure you into um, entering into a contract with them. They'll use scare tactics. They'll let you know that, I don't know, an example will be, your roof is damaged, we've got to fix this. Get second opinions on this. Don't go with the first bid or the first contractor that goes to your house. 
Another common um, scam that they do is they'll try to get into verbal agreements. Make sure that all your contracts are signed and in writing. The price of the material, changing during the job, get everything in writing. Don't pay in cash, pay with a check and save copies of the checks in your project file. Why use a licensed contractor? All licensed contractors have passed a trade and law exams and have undergone a thorough background check. CSOB licensed contractors and are required to hold a contractor's bond. And they are also required to have a workers' compensation insurance for all employees on the property. Workers' compensation insurance covers work injuries while on the job, which protects you, the homeowner. Greater consumers' protections, more options for consumers. CSOB can help with either in the beginning of the process of the complaint, they'll, do, um, they'll go through a mediation process. During the investigation, we determine what legal actions we take or if we recommend it for arbitration as long as they meet the qualifications for arbitration. These services are free to the consumer. California law requires that you use the use of licensed contractors for any home improvement job that costs $500 or more. When looking for a contractor, I strongly recommend that you ask a friend or a family for their recommendations. And not just that, I also recommend that you go onto our license board website and check, make sure that they are licensed. You could also see if they have any uh, complaints filed or if we have taken any legal action against that license before. You can also obtain it by calling the contractor state license board. The phone number there is the 800-321-2752. Once again, you can go onto our website at csob.ca.gov, make sure that they are licensed. Every uh, complaint has a four years um, statute of limitation. The um, statute of limitation also, um, you have a five day right to cancel the contract. It used to be three days, but for seniors, they've uh, made it a five-day right to cancel. Once again, the down payment must not be more than 10% or $1,000, whichever is less. Don't let the payments get ahead of the work. My name is Jackie Wiley, and I am with the Department of Financial Protection and Innovation. Our mission is to help Californians protect themselves from those that are uh, soliciting in the matter for undeceptive, unscrupulous, and business practices. So we are a government state agency. All our services are free. We are the regulatory and licensing agency with oversight of state financial institutions, products, and professionals. So one of the things that we do, our role is, is to do consumer awareness, like I'm doing today. My demographic is the Los Angeles County area, and I am here servicing and educating our older adults. And why older adults? We already know the story. I'm sure you've already heard it. You got the nest egg, you're retired, you know, you probably own your home, things like this. But on top of that, we have to remember that there are some of us who are older now and that we're isolated, we're living by ourselves. Um, and you know, a phone call is welcomed, just like mm, the internet social media, okay? So I wanna also just let you know that we have a consumer services office and that is housed in Sacramento and that we have a toll free number with, with wait times of less than five minutes. Did you hear me? Less than five minutes. And also hear this, that you don't have to press one, press two and wait for a representative to come on the line, okay? That is self okay? Thank you. Thank you. So the toll-free number for our agency is 1-866-275-2677.
So let's get started. I want to start by saying this. Um, Jose from the Contractor State License Board talked about solar panels. And I said that we license the PACE administer. What is PACE? PACE is Property Assessed Clean Energy. And what it is, it is a financing program that can help homeowners get these energy efficient and water saving improvements installed into their home. Now I stress energy efficient and I stress water savings because what they do, the solicitation has been, continues to be misrepresented that sounds like this. Hi, oh yeah, I'm here, you know, have you ever heard of the PACE program? Well, there's no money down right now and there's no out of pocket cost. So what does that sound like to me? Free. We all know that it's not free, okay? So you have to be mindful about solicitations. And we have to let you know that PACE is not a free government program and the homeowners must pay back the funding through their annual property taxes. We're seeing a lot of older adults and those who don't speak English as the first language um, being solicited and targeted. And like he said, I said it twice, energy efficient has nothing to do with, oh, maybe you might want to upgrade your cabinets. Have you thought about doing granite? That is not energy efficient, so don't allow the contractor to coax you into doing that. Because again, it's going to be attached to your property taxes, and that has nothing to do with the PACE program financing, okay? So let's get on into it. Let's talk about the new name, these pandemic-inspired telephone scams. So Assemblyman talked about the most prevalent one, or one of the most prevalent ones, and I'm going to talk real quick about maybe five that we are seeing that are trending. And yep, it's that grandparent relative skin. Hi, Grandma, Grandma, it is me. My friends and I are in trouble. We need you to go maybe to get a green dot card or a visa card to get us out of jail. But if you do it right now, let me let you speak to the officer and he'll tell you what to do. So, I, I, I mean, I'm not a grandparent, but my mom is. And I'm just going to say, grandparents always usually come to their grandkids' aid. Am I right? Hello? All right. So the caller will say, please don't tell mom and dad. And that's what you're not going to do. You're not going to tell the parents that they are in trouble. But before you do anything, please verify that the individual that they never said the name of, and maybe you might have said, Jackie, is that you? You sound different. So I have just initiated the caller to keep going forward with the scam. So please don't engage in phone calls that come to you um, um, sporadically. One of the other things that we're hearing about is that credit card scam. Hi, you might receive a phone call saying that your credit card has been locked. Maybe it's not a phone call. Maybe you got a text message that said it. And what is it saying? Please call this number immediately to unlock the credit card. Now, of course, you know, I know you're freaking out because it's like, oh my God, somebody got a hold of my credit card information. Am I right? I'm here to tell you, please, 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 do not respond to the text message. Delete it. Don't call the number. Don't reply yes or no. And please don't call the number that is left on your answering machine or that is the automated system telling you what to do. Go to the source yourself, which means go to your credit card, pull it out, turn it over, call the number that is on the card to verify. We have got to start doing our homework before we take action, okay? Um, you know, even another call saying that someone purchased, made a large purchase on your credit card. 
again, if you know you didn't use it, don't believe the caller, okay? Financial relief, investment opportunities, consolidation, modification, buy here, buy now, pay later, lowering your APR, maybe I can lower your car payment, whatever the case may be, be skeptical. When someone calls you with an offer or an opportunity to make money, gain money, or even something as simple as giving you more service for your TV uh, 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 cable company. I was talking to a lady this morning, you know, her husband bit the bullet and they was offering him, you know, um, uh, more channels. But of course he had to pay in advance to get the channels. But what did he do? He provided his personal checking information or his debit card information. And I'm gonna tell you again, I'm gonna say it one more time. Don't believe the caller on the other line. I am so tired of this one particular phone call and it's the car warranty. I get this call every day, no joke. And they have even started leaving voice messages. They even sent me a letter. So what they're saying to me now, hey, We've been trying to call you. This is not, this is the last time we're going to try to get a hold of you about this car warranty. So I answered and I said, well, what, what car are you talking about? Which car are you talking about? And the person said, well, you know which car doesn't have the warranty on. No, no, no. I, I, I'm not sure what you're talking about because I have three cars. You, you know which one. And, and I said, well, if you don't know, I definitely don't know, so I'm going to terminate the call. So if you know that the caller is, is giving you some bogus information, don't engage. Don't give them the information, all right? Government imposters, which is intended to mirror official websites. So, hi, I'm calling from DWP, and it shows that your, your bill is delinquent. Yes, I'm, I'm in the delinquent department, and I'm giving you a courtesy call so that you have until 5 o'clock today to pay the bill. Oh, yeah, we'll take check by over the phone. If you want to use your credit card, just provide me with that information. First of all, a government agency is not going to call you. When your bill or if your bill is late or delinquent, you're going to get it in the mail with a big red stamp or black stamp that says pass due, please pay, pay immediately. The IRS is not calling you to remind you that your taxes are due. Okay? And the financial institution that's calling you and telling you, hey, I'm so... You know, I'm so happy that you've been a customer of, of ours for 25 years. That's wonderful. Well, we're doing courtesy phone calls to all of our customers because we're updating our information. And so I just wanted to verify some information from you. Can you please provide your social... Wait, what? My social security number. Can you please provide your checking... Wait, what? You want my banking information. But so if I've been a customer for 25 plus years, don't you think they should have that information? So again, don't believe the caller. If you did not initiate the call, please don't engage. Don't believe it. Look at your viewer, even if it says ABC Bank and that's who you bank with. Don't, don't do it. Go to the source yourself, okay? So those are the, the main things that we're here we're seeing as trending. So let's talk a little bit about cybersecurity real quick. <clears throat> How many of us are on the internet? A lot of us are on the internet. We're Googling, we're shopping, we're just doing a whole bunch of stuff, you know. So we know that the internet is helpful and it's harmful at the same time. Do you agree? So what I want to implore to you today is that are you looking for the right signs to tell you that you're on a safe site? Are you looking for the closed lock? Are you looking for the S after the HTTP, which stands for secure? Are you hovering over the link to, to verify the URL that you're on the correct one? And the reason why I bring these things up, because again, copycat sites look alike. 
Amazon. I know I'm not the only one in here who has been Amazon shopping. So when you shop online, you know I'm doing Amazon, and right away, once I punch in my information, whether it's my debit card or my credit card, bam, I'm gonna get an email that says, thank you, your, your, your um, information has been confirmed. We will email you or text you when your shipping gets ready to come out. So what happened was a, a lady did all of that, but within the 30 minutes that she had pressed the send button, she got a pop-up to say that, oh wait, there was a problem with your credit card information, can you please re-enter it so that we can, you know, get your shipping on the way? It was Amazon.com, C-O-N, and not com. So please, even though things look official, whether it's via email or by mail, because of the logo doesn't always mean that it's legitimate. Go to the source. You know, older adults are very excited. I know my mom is excited about being on Facebook. I can contact this person. I can see this person and, you know, friends and family members from way back. And that really, really took off when the pandemic hit. Am I right? Because people couldn't go anywhere. So let me just let you know that um, dating sites, social media, and other websites include involve scammers forming fake romantic relationships with victims in order to manipulate them and take their money. What am I talking about? The romance scam. Romance, sweetheart, swindle, whatever you want to call it. Please be careful about people professing their love for you. I'm sorry, but you just can't be that lonely when you get to people on, 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 online looking for love, but people are. And it's sad to say that a recent report from the FBI reports more than 3,000 Californians falling victim to online romance scams last year, losing a total of nearly $184 million, and it's climbing. So when you meet somebody online, whether it's a dating site or someone that you saw that looked really good and now you're communicating, you're offline so that nobody doesn't see your information, it's just you and this person, once they start asking you for money, once they can't come see you, I mean something as simple as, you know, don't you have face, FaceTime on your phone where I can at least see you? Well, my phone is old, I wish I could, you know, get me a new one and people have sent the money, so please be careful. My name is Ryan Waters. I'm a postal inspector with the U.S. Postal Inspection Service. We're the law enforcement arm of the U.S. Postal Service, so we protect the flow of mail, mail facilities, uh, employees, everything like, like that. So I'm just gonna give a perspective of everything that you've heard, kind of how mail can be involved in that. Um, one, some of the most important um, ways that you can get defrauded is identity theft or someone stealing your information. So one major way that that happens now is mail theft. Um, so what you need to do is kind of be aware of everything that should be coming to you. If you're, not, if you're missing mail or all of your mail is not coming or if you're expecting something and it doesn't come, be on the lookout for that. Now it could be that it's coming to your mailbox and someone might be grabbing it from it, so maybe try to take the mail as soon as you can. When you're putting mail out, if you're writing checks or anything with any personal information, don't put it in a neighborhood collection box where it sits for hours and hours. It'd be something where you might want to give it directly to the post office if that's something that's available to you, or put it out as late as possible. It could even be if you have important stuff and you have the little flag that you put on your uh, mailbox, don't necessarily do that. They're going to take the mail in your mailbox no matter if you have the flag or not. Another thing that happens is a change of address request. I don't know if any of you have moved recently, but there's a service that the USPS gives where you can online put a change of address request and then your mail will be automatically forwarded for up to a year and you have to pay a small fee. Um, unfortunately, this, this can be used for fraud. If someone is able to get your information, pay a fee, they can change your mail being directed towards you correctly, and they can send it to themselves. Sometimes it's hard to track because they'll put it to a PO box or uh, one of those FedEx um, stations where you know it's not like we can see who exactly it's going to. So again, keep track of your mail. 
you're not going to know exactly what's coming to you all the time, but if you're missing bills, if you're expecting voter information, if you're expecting driver's licenses, and you're not getting it, and you're not getting it on time, that's something that you're going to want to note, and then you can report that um, to us. And so I should actually also give you our contact information. The best phone number to report mail fraud is 1-877-876-2455. And that would be to report any type of mail fraud. I mean, we just hosted a senior scam, scam stopper event here at uh, Silverado at the Beach Cities Health District campus, and uh, we we had uh, in a you know overwhelming number of people, uh, over 200 people showed up. We we had to uh, scramble to provide extra seating, but uh, people for, were coming from throughout the South Bay, um, not, not just from the Beach Cities, but. Uh, uh, you know, we, we heard uh, folks from Gardena, Harbor City, Harbor Gateway, uh, people throughout the South Bay have seen this uh, dramatic increase in these scam artists that are, that are targeting seniors. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, really, it's really sad, it's really disgusting, it's really, you know, makes me angry, but, uh, uh, you know, we need to do more to crack down on on these, uh, these scam artists, uh, especially those that are targeting our seniors. And it seems like because they're so hard to catch, really the best weapon is information for the seniors. That's right. You know, we really tried to focus. We, we had a wonderful panel of uh, representatives to try to educate consumers about how to protect yourself. I mean, you know, there's only so much that uh, our, our police, our law enforcement can do. Uh, you know, many of these uh, scam artists, especially those that operate over phones, you know, they're, they're uh, fly-by-night operations. As, as soon as you try to, uh, you know, track them down, track down the number that they called from, you know, they're, they, they just shut down operation or maybe they're operating for somewhere overseas. You know, we, uh, it's, it's um, uh, a frustrating situation. So the best uh, first step uh, is to educate consumers on how to protect themselves. And you gave out so many good phone numbers, which we uh, will also give out because people need to call somebody or talk to somebody so they have the information they need, obviously. Yeah, you know, I mean, the, some of the, the state, state and federal agencies, they, they emphasize that uh, you're not going to be, uh, you know, put on hold for a long time. You're not going to, you know, pr press one and, and, and uh, be, be sent to, you know, the, the maze of, uh, of bureaucracy, as, as is so often the case in our lives. Um, uh, you know, I also wanted to emphasize that uh, I represent the South Bay uh, from uh, uh, Palos Verdes uh, up through Manhattan Beach and from the beach out to the 110 freeway. And uh, if we can ever be of assistance uh, to, to people that are afraid that they've uh, become a victim of a scam, uh, please call our office at 310-375-0691. Thank you so much. Such important information today, and we will pass it along as well. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for helping us spread the word. And that will do it for today's show. We sure hope that you have learned something so that you will not become a victim of a senior scam. I'm Maria Sorreo. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time around the peninsula.